Okay. We're here. We're live. It's a new year. It's January 2nd, 2024. Um, kind of mind blowing, but also totally expected. And I don't know. I'm excited about it. Hi, Amanda. I'm stoked about 2024 for many reasons. Um, number one being you guys, and thank you for being here. Um, I'm so excited to work with more people this year and see if we can't get you to feeling like your voice is able to do everything you want it to do with no questions, less fear, less dysregulation, uh, just less unsureness. That's what I want for you. So hopefully you want the same thing. <clears throat> um, Number two I'm excited for is a lot of level up things in my career that I've been working a long time to get. Um, I'm really super excited for my songwriting. I have a bunch of songs that I wrote this past year that I am finally taking the time, and I'm saying this out loud to be accountable to myself as well, taking the time to finish and produce and release. They need to go out into the world so that I can keep leveling up and, and writing and singing more songs. I can't just keep holding on to the song because I feel like I could do more work on it. You know, that is one of the biggest lessons <clears throat> that I have learned in the last bunch of years as a perfectionist. Like, as I tell my students this all the time, but it's much easier to say that to somebody else when you're out of it than when you are in a song in the weeds with something either you wrote or something you've been working on and you just keep feeling like, oh, okay, I'm, I just want to tweak this. I just want to tweak this thing and that feels better, but now there's this other thing I need to tweak. And now there's this other thing. I, I feel like I need to take a, a, a whole other class to learn how to do that part. And um, that is perfectionism. And I am trying to release more of that this year. I'm trying to release being a perfectionist. I'm trying to <clears throat> recover from this voice inside my head that's been there my whole life that just keeps saying you're doing it wrong you're not doing enough you need to do more you're being too much um it's just this this two opposing ideas that battle inside of us all the time and i think it's really important to realize that where that is coming from is not ourselves. It took me a long time to realize that those feelings were not coming from me and therefore I did not need to listen to them. Um, and they didn't even come from my parents. They came from my parents' parents and the society that they grew up in, you know, which is a long ass time ago and things are very different now than they were for my grandparents, you know. So the pressures that they felt, they passed down to my parents. And that's what my parents were dealing with. And even as much as my parents evolved and did their work on not being perfectionist as well and not needing to be people pleaser, there's still a lot of that that came through to me. And I don't blame them. It's not their fault. It's just how they were raised and how they were brought into this world. And a lot of that you can't change. Um, you can't change the stuff that happened to you when you were zero to six years old. So. The thing about that is knowing when to listen to those voices inside your head and when to not. And so often we are met with negative voices first and those negative voices have a lot to do with uh, teachers you've had that were frustrated, you know, with being a teacher or something in their own life. Your parents in a moment of frustration, what you got instead of seeing them as a frustrated adult, which you would be able to now, the thing that you saw when you were a kid and you heard was directly related to, I'm not good enough in this moment. So this is where our perfectionism comes from all the time. Is even if they didn't mean that, what we hear and what we see from a lot of these adult figures in our life was that we are not good enough to get the thing that we wanted, to be treated well, to get praise, it's, it's about our worth instead of um, how they were feeling that day, which is usually more the truth. Um, so in this season of my life in the last seven years or so, um, I, uh, 
I think it's really necessary to know where you come from and to know what your limits are and to be okay with that. But most importantly, to just keep taking risks for yourself, even if you feel like you're not ready, even if you feel like there's more you can do, even if you feel, even if that voice is really, really loud in your head telling you that you're not good enough and you're not ready and you could do more work and you could do more courses and all that stuff, <clears throat> it's really good to get into the habit of practicing just going for it, saying yes to yourself anyway, even if you feel like you're lying to yourself for the first couple months, you know, just going, going and doing the thing, even though you feel not ready. And that is a big, big thing to, to work on. That is hugely important work as an artist, because so often the voices outside of your head are also telling you you're not good enough, right? And if you hear that, your gremlin is going to take that and turn it into fuel for its own fire. So if you if you don't have a relationship with the gremlin that involves separating yourself from that voice, you're always going to take other people's opinions and make them worth more than your own. So these last couple of years as an artist, as I released my first debut album in 2020, and I've been writing more with other people and sharing my art with other people and collaborating and honestly just sharing more of, of my artistic self in general <clears throat> in many different ways, many different levels. Um, continuing to say yes to myself over everything. If I like it, if I think it's good, after I've edited it, of course, and maybe gotten a little bit of feedback from somebody I trust, somebody who has been where I've been, key point. Don't just get random feedback from anybody. Um, after that, then I share. And of course, I have this moment where my girlman pops in and is like, mm, I think you could have spent another 20 hours on it and it would have been even better. And my job as an artist is to be like, okay, cool, who cares? I am sharing it now anyway, as it is, because I like it because I know that it's good and because I've spent a lot of time on it. And at this stage of my life, it's more important for me to practice putting out things when I don't feel ready instead of holding on to things and making every single thing I do a masterpiece and spending my lifetime on it and never sharing it. Because if you like it, if it brings you joy, why not share it with other people and let it bring them joy too? Even if it's not quote unquote done in your own mind. Um, so my goal this year is to work on my original music ahead of everything else. Um, I get really sucked into, uh, theater projects and I love theater. Don't get me wrong, but I get really sucked into saying yes to them because it makes me feel needed and loved. And, uh, that is a dangerous, that is a dangerous addiction uh in itself needing to feel needed um so my goal this year is to prioritize my own music first and only after i take the time to give my own songs the life that they deserve then i can say yes to other projects i'm going to keep writing with other people because that counts as my original music for me um but i have been ignoring it for the last nine months or so and there were a lot of other things that happened in the middle there there was a big disaster in my in my community and um lots of other things popped up um not that that's not a worthy <laughs> a worthy uh excuse um i think it's really good for me to say this out loud so that you guys can hear it as the artist that you are becoming do the thing that makes you happy first. If the song that you just finished, you love it, and you've gone back and edited it, you've gotten back feedback, even if you don't even want to get feedback and you just want to share it, if you just love it so much, freaking share the thing, you know? Some of you are really good at this, and some of you are hiding songs that you have been working on, whether they're yours or other people's covers, 
you've been hiding them away for a year at this point. And believe me, I know because you sang them for me a year ago and you still haven't shared them with anybody else. So, hey, here we, uh, I was just talking about people like you who share stuff um, with, with abandon and who are really good at sharing stuff, even if you feel like there's always more tweaking you can do and more things you have to learn, you still openly share your art and your voice, which is really exciting. So thank you for being um, a role model for that. If uh, anybody wants to see um, he was amazing music, go to Humanized Heart on Instagram. Um, it's a good example of making stuff and putting it out and, you know, getting it outside of your head and then continuing to work on new music and going through the cycle again and again and again. And it's hard to do, especially if you are a beginner at this and making music at all. Like, even if you don't write original music, that's fine if you're working on other people's music. I, I've done this myself. I've held on to a cover for a year before I sing my version of it because I think, oh, it's not as good as the other person. There's many excuses to hold on to it, but we have a really hard time finding the reasons to share. Um, yeah, music can always be better and music will never be perfect. Let's gonna just release that. I love that. Yes, both things, both sides of the spectrum can be true. Um, so that's what I've been working on in my music career is the imperfection muscle, putting stuff out, even though there's always tweaking that can be done, even though I know that I am always getting better. Like I'm not going to wait for 10 years to share my voice because I'm only wanting to share the 10 years forward version of my voice. Like, what's the point? Like I have worth and merit as a singer right now as well as I will 10 years from now. So why not share now so people can share the joy that I have from singing instead of just holding it for myself. So that's my word of the year is, is connection. The word of last year was share. And I kind of like that, but I wanted to make it more two-sided. Um, and so connection is my word of this year is really connecting with people face to face even with, if we are online, if you, I love my online students, um, but we connect, you know, we have conversations. It's not just about um, me sharing my music and hoping somebody latches onto it. It's about me sharing where I am right now and not giving myself disclaimers for it, not saying, yeah, this is not as good as it could be. Here you go. I hope you like it, question mark that's not connection, right? It's not exactly the same. And last year it was really important for me to just get out of my hole <laughs> and just share it, not caring what happens on the other side of it. But this year it's really important for me to connect with the people who listen to my music. Um, so I'm doing a lot of networking this year. That's my goal um, within the music industry and outside of it. Um, my goal is to connect directly with my students and to connect with more people so that I can see your faces instead of just posting on here and hoping you watch my videos. Um, I'm starting a membership program where it is not uh, as in-depth as private coaching because I know that's not accessible for everybody, but the membership is so that I get to know you and I see your face, but it's not as, as huge a commitment as private sessions or the full vocal magic program. Um, so that's, uh, one way that I'm, I am doubling down on my connection word of the year. Um, and that I'm shooting for launching next week, <laughs> shooting for it, no guarantees. Um, so we're going to say, make it a goal for myself because I love saying things out loud and making it accountable. Next, uh, next Tuesday, the 9th, I will have this program ready to launch. I will. And if you're here and you are curious about it, DM me and I'll, I'll send you the details before um, before I launch it next week. And you can be the first one in. Um, it, I'm really excited about it because it's uh, you still get live time with me. You still get one-on-one um, -on -one time with me uh, either in the group or you can uh, add on private session uh, every month if you'd like to. So whatever level of private work you want, um, you can. 
So totally possible to uh, lean into your singing without needing to feel like you have to have an hour private session every week. Um, you still have access to me for feedback if you want it. Um, we'll see how it goes for the first first couple months. Um, but yeah, I want to be available for more people. So that'll be a membership. It's called the Enchanted Membership. And I will have it launched next Tuesday because I'm saying it to you right now. Um, <laughs> it's going to happen somehow or another. Um, so uh, that's really exciting. So that's how I'm holding myself accountable. And this is something I've never done before. So it's kind of scary to me, just like sharing music, putting this new program out here and not knowing what's going to happen, who's going to join, who's going to like it, who's going to not like it. Um, I'm going to put it out there anyway, because that's my goal is to connect with more people and to keep saying yes to the things that feel right. Uh, even if I don't feel completely 100% ready, I feel 85% ready, 90% ready. And in the next week before I launch, I'm going to get closer to 100. And I'm probably never going to feel 100% ready because I don't, I've stopped expecting that from myself. Because um, there's always a sense of uh, unreachability when you expand your comfort zone. And that's totally a normal thing. So if that looks like putting a video of you singing on Instagram, listen, you're never going to feel 100% comfortable. I can promise you that. So just start the thing in taking the second and third and fourth steps to make the thing happen. I promise you, you will feel a little more ready as long as your goal is not to get to 100% ready before you hit the button. Yes? So I'm doing this stuff along with you guys. We're, we're doing scary things in 2024. We're leveling up together. Um, we're taking, taking our steps. We're not taking huge scary leaps because we know that's not great for our nervous system. We are taking big steps though, out slightly outside of our comfort zone and then expanding into that bigger comfort zone. Yes, that is the method. That is the magic of vocal magic. Um, I don't force people to go sing in front of a thousand people if they're not ready because it's just going to shut down your nervous system. Um, but if you are feeling like a slight bit of excitement about this next step, whatever that looks like for you, recording your first single, um, putting something on YouTube, um, starting a band, whatever that looks like for you, if there's a little bit of excitement in the fear, that's a good sign. <laughs> That's a good sign. If it's a straight up fear, let's talk about it, right? Let's finesse some of these things. There's there's probably a lot of things that your gremlin voice is getting in the way of um, that we can probably untangle a little bit. Um, but in the meantime, before you do the thing, all you gotta do is take the first step. And I promise you it will feel easier to take the second step after you take the first step. And then the third step will feel just a little smidgen easier than that too. Um, and so this is why we break things down into little steps and we put you in front of one person to sing and then in front of two people and then in front of five people so that your comfort zone can expand a little bit by a little bit so that you can become acclimated to the colder water a little bit by a little bit over time and you're not just jumping in a, um, a bunch of ice water, which can be good. I've heard good things about it, but uh, not the best for everybody. And everybody's nervous system is different, as you know. So that's uh, exciting things are happening in that respect. Um, the other exciting thing that's happening in my career, I'll just share it because it might be relevant to some of you. I got accepted to a songwriting camp that's incredibly uh, an amazing experience. It's um, a very rare thing that we get uh, People who are not already professional songwriters who are working towards it get an experience like this to work with people who are top songwriters and industry professionals. Um, I'm really excited for that. That's in, coming up in a little over a month. So just the fact that I applied to it was a big deal. Like filling out the paperwork and sending the email took me a while to get up the courage to do it. And I've been thinking about it for the last couple of years. But this is the year 
that my comfort zone had expanded enough so that I could take this one little step out of it and say, okay, I think I'm ready for this. I'm not 100% ready, but I think I'm ready enough. Here you go. Here's my application. Then I got accepted, and now I have to actually go, which is the harder part. Um, I was in a, a group yesterday, uh, a co-regulation group um, with Muscle Music, and we were talking about how the receiving of the thing that you wanted is often harder than the asking for the thing that you wanted. So uh, just keep that in mind. You're not looking for complete comfort. You're looking to go towards the uncomfortable little bit by little bit, because that's how we train yourself to be able to lift big weights, to be able to push bigger and bigger red buttons, um, to be able to handle seeing in front of more people, to be able to handle people seeing you in bigger ways, hearing your voice in bigger ways. Even if you don't feel ready, it's not about the skill and the talent. It's about can your nervous system handle what you're about to do, the expansion that your nervous system is about to feel. And I know you can. You absolutely can handle it. It's about what you do every day to put yourself in a place of slight challenge, right? Because if we just sit on the couch and watch movies every day, that's what your your nervous system is going to be used to. Anything outside of that, anything bigger than that, is going to be scary and too expansive for your nervous system. But if you start to take one little step outside, then you're going to be like, okay, I can do that. And then you go back inside. And if you take two little steps outside, the next day you're like, okay, I did that. And then you go back inside. And it's slowly getting outside of your house a little bit further every day that will show you, will give you, it's not about any, showing anybody else, it's about showing you and your nervous system evidence every single day. Just like you're a scientist, there's evidence that you can do this thing that is slightly scary. And so if you're the type of person that loves jumping in the deep end, do that, great. Make it happen for yourself. But it doesn't work for everybody, especially people who are freezers, who are fighters. Um, which are enforce things a lot. <laughs> and so I'm saying, give yourself the grace of number one, knowing when a voice is there, your gremlins and not your own. And number two, give yourself the grace of knowing that you can probably handle the thing that you wanna do. You just have to get yourself to the place over a little bit of time where that doesn't feel like a complete attack on your nervous system, right? So. If your goal is to uh, record a video and post it on Instagram, I wouldn't, if that act right now feels terrifying, I wouldn't do it right away because your nervous system is going to turtle and be like, nope, 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 don't want to do that anymore. I would start with recording the video, just pressing record. You don't ever have to send it to anybody if you don't want to. Then record another video the next day. Record another video the next day. Then maybe on the fifth day, you send the video to your best friend. And you're like, hey, I'm not sending this to anybody else. I don't need feedback, but here you go. I'm just sharing because I need to practice sharing. Um, then maybe the next week, you practice sending it to two people. And the next week, you practice sending it to five people. And so all of a sudden, you've gotten to this point where, oh, five people have seen me sing on a video great like next time if i post it to my account that is 100 people it will feel just like i did that 20 times so maybe you give yourself 20 days of sending to five people and then 100 people won't feel so scary um create a close friends thing on instagram so it's another step in between you know find ways to give yourself and your nervous system evidence that you can do the thing that you can do a thing a step number one step on the way to the hundredth step yes um but we're always turning towards doing slightly painful things <laughs> slightly challenging slightly scary things because that's how we train the nervous system we're not shooting for no dysregulation ever because that's 
unrealistic and not helpful as a human being. You have this hardware that can be trained. So put it into new and, and exciting and expansive situations to make that happen for yourself. So all that is to be said, I'm going to the songwriting camp is a big, it's a big expansion for me. So, uh, but what I have been doing the last couple of years is co-writing with more and more people, better and better people and uh, multiple people, people from all walks of life. So that when I go to the songwriting camp, it's not so scary. It won't be my first time writing with somebody. And it doesn't feel like I'm just dropped in a freezing cold puddle. It feels like, oh, okay, I've been in the cold water. I'm acclimated to the cold water. It's just about to get a little colder, <laughs> you know, slightly a little more feeling of pressure. But on the other hand, it's people who are probably just feeling the same stuff as me. So uh, it's, it's all the same. And, and a lot of this pressure is in our heads anyway, right? We put so much pressure on ourselves instead of uh, the, the other people who we think are putting the pressure on us. They're really not. So go out there in this new year, take bigger steps outside your comfort zone. Turn towards uncomfortability for a little bit. A little bit at a time will help get you outside of your house a little bit at a time. Um, if that means working on your singing in a way that you've never had before and you want to do that with me, come back here next Tuesday. I will be announcing the open uh, the launch of the Enchanted membership. Um, I'll probably tease a little bit a couple, a couple days before. So keep your eye out here. DM me if you have any questions. Um, it's going to be pretty fun. I'm excited. Um, again, lighter commitment than all my other programs, but I'm here for you nonetheless. Um, yeah, I'm excited to share the details in this coming week. And I hope you have a lovely rest of your first week of January, first week of the year. I hope you are daydreaming big right now because so many things are possible this year. Just the energy of things. I follow some astrology people. They're saying big things are coming. Uh, regardless if you believe that or not, it's up to you to expand a little bit at a time so that the big expansion that you see from today to next January 2nd, 2025 will be more palpable. And you won't even notice that it happened because you did it in a way that your nervous system loves. It loves to, it wants to expand. It really does. I mean, sometimes your body doesn't agree, but if, if in my experience, it feels good to notice that your nervous system has been expanding as a result of you continuing to say yes to yourself over everyone else's opinion. I will tell you many stories of this, uh, in our, in our memberships and everything, but, um, big things happen. Big things happen when you say yes to yourself. Big things happen when you, on purpose, take steps out of your comfort zone. Big things happen when you let your voice heard, let your voice be heard again and again, even when you don't feel ready. Share your voice. I want to hear it. Let me know how that feels. I love you very much. I'll see you soon.